Hello, and welcome to SBTI's training for financial institutions. This session covers module two, voluntary finance climate action ecosystem. In this module, we'll be giving you an overview of the various actors in the voluntary finance climate action ecosystem. After completing this module, you'll be able to name key roles within the voluntary finance climate action ecosystem, articulate complementary aspects of SBTI and other organizations, and highlight current outstanding questions within the broader ecosystem. So let's get started. There are an exceptional number of corporate climate action ecosystem players, which only continues to grow. In the 1990s and 2000s, many emerged. In the lead up to the Kyoto Protocol and in the two decades since, many of these organizations focused on driving corporate action, initially via governance and disclosure. In 2015, around the Paris COP, many organizations that are critical to our space, PCAF, TCFD, Science-Based Targets Initiative, and others emerged to drive more action. In the last couple of years, particularly leading up to the 2021's COP26, there's been significant momentum around the role of financial institutions in particular. The point of this slide is to show a non-exhaustive list, although there's quite a lot on this page, of various players. We'll delve into some of these more deeply in this section. There's also greater detail available in the takeaway pack associated with this module. The Science-Based Targets Initiative is a coalition of the Carbon Disclosure Project, CDP, the World Wildlife Fund, WWF, and the UN Global Compact, and the World Resources Institute, WRI. Founded in 2015, SBTI launched and codified sector decarbonization principles for 13 key industries, such as power generation, cement, iron and steel, aluminum, chemicals, and petrochemicals, pulp and paper, amongst other industries. In 2018, SBTI announced a multi-year project aimed to codify guidance for financial institutions specific to decarbonizing investment portfolios. What started in 2018 was a two plus year public consultation process that involves several stakeholder interviews, webinar series, and road testing with participants. A first draft of the guidance and tool did not emerge until August of 2020. The guidance will continue to evolve today. SBTI has over 3,400 organizations to date and aims to be the centralized standard of emissions target setting. So what makes SBTI so unique? There are four key aspects. Firstly, it provides independent third-party assessment. It encourages other organizations to set targets or to engage the real economy. And while there are others that do that, it's the only one that provides third-party assessment. Secondly, it enables comparability and standardization within the industry. When organizations can set any targets, picking and choosing what to include and how to measure it, they aren't comparable. It makes it difficult for a company or any stakeholder to compare one company relative to another, even within an industry. Third, SBTI leverages strong recognition and usage in the real economy. There are other industry alliances that encourage target setting, but none have influence like SBTI in galvanizing the real economy to action which is exactly what financial institutions are being called to do. Finally, SBTI catalyzes change this decade by differentiating between near-term and net zero targets, which are longer term. If the world needs to have emissions by 2030 in the next eight years, the near-term actions must be incentivized, not only an ambition for 2050. In summary, SBTI holds a very unique role and offers a unique platform for financial institutions. To provide a bit more detail on SBTI, you can see on the left-hand side that the number of companies setting science-based targets has risen quite rapidly in the last years. 
has noted there are over 3,400 companies with commitments or targets, which has grown from just a little over 100 five years ago. Setting targets is popular across many industries, with the top four being in professional services, food and beverage processing, textile and apparel, and equipment and machinery. When we note that a differentiation of SBTI is its ability to leverage strong recognition and action by the real economy, you can see why. These 3,400 companies are the early movers who are creating the tipping point for their industries. SBTI is a voluntary platform for climate leadership in the private sector. Our theory of change is that we can catalyze action through peer tipping point effects. As you can see on the left-hand side, we target the innovators and early adopters of science-based targets. They are the only ones who will set these and influence peers to follow suit. We've seen this play out time and again with the industries we work with. As you can see in the middle of this curve, once we have 20% of any group, the next 40 to 60 quickly join as an SBT becomes a necessary indicator of leadership. This becomes a proof of concept for policymakers that the private sector can reduce emissions while still thriving economically. It gives policymakers a runway to introduce policy without jeopardizing economic competitiveness arguments. However, SBTs are not the full solution. They're helpful for catalyzing ambition and broadening leadership practices. However, there is a need for regulatory actions to ensure that laggards are required to follow suit in order to ensure the full economy transforms. We just dived into SBTI, but as you previously saw, there are many actors. Many of them play different, but sometimes overlapping roles in facilitating the financial institution's voluntary action. While this is a non-exhaustive example, our goal here is to outline the key buckets of actions and a sampling of organizations within each. The first set of buckets are the foundation actions that many companies are taking today. They account and they disclose. The next three set of buckets are actions that companies take if they are highly committed to addressing climate change. They mobilize, aspire, and align. Let's dive into each of these. Account is understanding where you currently stand today. Accounting for greenhouse gas emissions using a common framework such as the Greenhouse Gas Protocol or the Partnership for Carbon Accounting Financial, PCAF. Disclose. After one is appropriately accounted for their emissions today, many seek to disclose or benchmark their progress. Some are mandatory in certain countries, like the EU taxonomy or the Task Force for Climate-Related Financial Disclosure in certain countries, while others are voluntary, like the aforementioned TCFD, the framework which is being developed by the International Sustainability Standards Board, or the Carbon Disclosure Project, Annual Request for Emissions Disclosure. Mobilize. For those who want to show a high level of commitment, it's often a first step to join a coalition and commit to climate change. For example, that might be the business ambition for 1.5 degrees Celsius, which is in partnership with SBTI. It can also include Climate Action 100 and others. Aspire. However, just because you're going to do something or say you're going to do something, it isn't enough for a high committer. Actually naming your specific commitments by setting a target is important. Third-party approved targets provide an added layer of verification, such as SBTI. However, there are other organizations that promote self-identified target setting, even if they don't verify it, like the Glasgow Financial Alliance for Net Zero, GFAN. These are two prominent organizations with complementary and different aspects. We'll delve into a greater comparison of the two on the next slide. Finally, align. One needs to assess the future scenarios and pathways relative to the end goal in order to determine whether one's portfolio today aligns with it and where they might need to adjust. There are numerous organizations out there that provide pathways, such as the IEA, One Earth, and others. On a subsequent slide, we'll walk you through this interaction as if we were in the shoes of a financial institution. 
We've just gone through a lot of organizational names. One very common set of questions revolves around how SBTI does or doesn't relate to the Greenhouse Gas Protocol and the Partnership for Carbon Accounting Financials, PCAF. For the real economy, GHGP covers emissions for all scopes. However, for financial institutions, GHGP covers scope one, scope two, and scope three operational emissions, while PCAF covers how to account for scope three financed emissions. PCAF and GHGP tightly partner, and PCAF has the mark of assurance from GHGP. For those newer to the emission scopes, we'll explain that in module three, the SBT overview, in addition to delving into far more greater details in modules four, five, and six of this training. So how does this relate to SBTI? SBTI is built upon and refers to the GHGP standards. For scope three, it incorporates the PCAF methodology, but for FIs, it can set SBTs without PCAF. However, SBTI follows PCAF closely and it only differentiates in one spot, but that could change over time. Throughout all the modules, we'll we will call out where SBTI relies on and or differs from GHGP and PCAF. For PCAF in particular, there's a deeper dive in Module 5, Scope 3, Emissions Overview. A common question revolves around what are the similarities and differences between SBTI and GFANS. The main takeaway is that there are complementary aspects, but SBTI is the only one that currently provides third-party standards and verification of targets. As we previously discussed, SBTI is a coalition that defines, promotes, and validates science-based targets as a third party. It spans most industries with financial institutions specific. It's civil society led. It's focused on targets with a more prescriptive standards approach. And it enables FIs to set third party verifiable ambition. GFANS is an industry coalition in partnership with the UN Race to Zero to drive change across the financial sector. It is specific to FIs only. It's industry-led with a UN partner. It offers a broad vision for how to execute with recommendations, but not required method. Although you will see that certain alliances like the asset owners Alliance are moving to more specific requirements. And then finally, it enables FIs to signal or set self-determined ambitions. We've now talked about many important organizations and deep dived into a few of them. Now let's take an illustrative example of a financial institution based in the EU who wants to align their portfolio to 1.5 degrees and commit to a net zero future. What does this journey look like? Who does it engage and why? It'll first engage in some foundational actions, then move into actions that take it into the high commitment category, which you see on the right-hand side. If we start on the left, first, it's going to account. The company seeks to account for its emissions today. The greenhouse gas protocol is the first step for providing guidance on how to account for scope one, two, and three operational emissions. Then it will seek to account for its scope three financed emissions. As a reminder, PCAF incorporates and builds on the GHGP to account for financed emissions. A common next step for companies is to increasingly disclose through the Task Force for Climate Related Disclosure, the TCFD, reporting on a number of topics, including governance and high level emissions, to name a few. In many countries, this is still voluntary, but in others, like the UK, it's mandatory. Another common voluntary step is to disclose emissions through CDP, which enables companies to benchmark and share progress via standard survey. CDP's disclosure system is aligned with TCFD's recommendation, but is not required by TCFD. Finally, the EU-based company will be required to report its share of green activities through the EU taxonomy framework. This is where some FIs end, just accounting and disclosing. However, many are moving towards the high commitment, which is what our illustrative company does. Our 
FI decides to publicly commit to action by attaching itself to two entities. First, the business ambition for 1.5 degrees, which is in collaboration with SBTI, and the Glasgow Financial Alliance for Net Zero, GFAN, to commit to driving towards net zero emissions. The FI wants to set a science-based target that is also verified by a third-party entity to demonstrate that it is accepted by a non-industry source. Therefore, it commits to setting a verified SBT aligned with 1.5. We would note that FIs, according to SBTI, can align to well below 2 degrees Celsius. Next, it needs to set a methodology that it will utilize to align its pathway to the objectives that is committed to. SBTI provides various methodologies. Just a reminder that a company can set a science-based target utilizing other scientifically verified pathways. However, it does not mean it is verified by a third party like SBTI. It will then review, weigh, and select a pathway as indicated by the methodology. Over time, and with major portfolio shifts, firms will need to go back to account and align iteratively and then compare it to pathways. Since this FI also committing to engage with GFAN, it will use that platform to connect with industry peers on how to transition to net zero. GFAN recommends SBTI as one method for setting a science-based target. Finally, RE100 encourages companies to set renewable energy targets for 2030. SBTI notes it as an option for setting a scope two target. We'll go through the mechanics of how to actually do all this in subsequent modules. Yes, there are a lot of ecosystem actors that are driving important change and collaboration across and within industries. However, it is still evolving. We'd be remiss to note that, leaving some challenges and questions outstanding that we're all working towards addressing. So what are they? One, there are different scopes across key guidance, such as asset classes and required coverage. Some feel that there's lack of harmonization between target setting methodologies and pathways. There's limited coordination between several key actors. There's different expectations across industries, for example, between broader asset owners and those in private equity. And there's lack of alignment with existing industry frameworks and company portfolios. We're all working together to address these outstanding challenges. SBTI in particular is working with other ecosystem actors to address each of the items on this slide. Concluding this module, you should leave with a few key takeaways. The complex climate action ecosystem has recently coalesced around financial institutions. Key actors play varied and sometimes multiple roles across foundational and highly committed steps. Setting a science-based target has become very popular in recent years, and its third-party verification is key for companies to reduce emissions. And finally, the overall system continues to evolve, with key questions stemming from many players and lack of cross-ecosystem standardization that we are all working to resolve. Thank you for listening to this module.